journey up the A11 to Kent Carlo to do a final senior group. Three years in Wolverhampton, four years in Wales, and a, and a, a stint in uh, East End before finally seeing the light and coming to Harlow in 2009. We moved to Ty Green Village in the Wolseley residence of Bushware. When not being a counsellor, Mark is a teacher with a rare combination of specialisms, qualified to both teach science and drama. As well as his teaching role, predominantly taking the hardest to manage behaviourally challenging classes. A skill that I'm sure will serve him well in his training. <laughs> Mark has spent a decade and a half as a head of year, uh, supervised a cohort of 240 children, a role that required him to be a patient with class, a counsellor, and an advisor, while working with children, families, um, and outside agencies to remove the barriers that learning is difficult to new children. He's currently teaching at high school in Chelmsford. Again, choose and take some of the most challenging classes in school. Now, many of us that have spent the past two years with uh, Council of Lords Chamber, both in the Chamber and the Twitter, will know that Mark is Stephen's former. And what many of you may not know is where that comes from from Mark's brief stint in the film industry. <laughs> <laughs> As Sergeant Thomas in the attempt um, and his time in the season, I'm sure you're going to watch it somewhere. <laughs> Mark served as a business Bushfair counsellor, serving his community um, and being involved in, in events such as Bushfair Fest. He has supported me this year and taken to the role of deputy leader. He's, been, he's provided support, kept calm and steady hand when under pressure. I appreciate all this support from Mark and I know that he will be great and do a great job of the honour and privilege that he uses to serve as leader of this great town. And it's my active honour to nominate him as leader of Holocaust. I first met Mark um, when he was campaigning to be a councillor of Bush Fair two years ago. And what struck me was not just his kindness, but also his work ethic. During his time as councillor, he's already done so much, both for his local community and for the wider community of Harlow. As I've got to know Mark, I've seen some more of his great qualities, his pragmatism, his uh, public speaking skills. But above all, he's got something, a quality that's all too rare in politicians, his ability to listen to other people's point of view. I'm hugely honoured to second Mark to be our leader. I know he's the right person to take us forward, to shape Harlow's future, and will above all help the people of our town. Because after all, that's why we're here. Thank you. So we agree that Councillor Mark Ingle is the deputy leader. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're now on to item 9, the appointment to the cabinet. So call the leader to announce the deputy leader and appointment to the cabinet. Thank you, Chair. Councillors, um, members of the public. Um, my surprise at standing here on this occasion tonight is um, matched only by the profound sense of honour that I feel as well, and an ever deepening sense of responsibility. When news of me having um, been elected to be the Labour leader first came out in the newspapers, I was trimming my hedge, and my next door neighbour came to me and he said, Mark, I see you've been. Um, elected to be the Labour Party uh, in Harlow and you're going to um, be the new leader of the council and I said yes and he said well many congratulations I said thank you very much he said now when are the council going to come and trim the grass on that perch I do realise now everything in Harlow is my fault <laughs> um, so my first task is to announce a new deputy leader and choose a cabinet um, my deputy leader Already a tower of strength to me um, is Waida Foreman, and she's going to take on a new portfolio, a portfolio uh, called Qualities and Diversity, marking our commitment for equal opportunities here in Harlow. My cabinet includes some well known faces Mike Danvers in resources, Mark Wilkinson on housing, and Danny Purton in environment. Yeah. 
Another well-known face, our last leader, our excellent last leader, um, is Emma Toa. And I'm delighted that she's going to take on the second youth portfolio that we've created, underlining our commitment to a thriving economy to support our town's growth. She's going to become the portfolio holder of economic growth. A new face in the cabinet, an experienced councillor, um, taking over the regeneration portfolio, I'd be delighted to have John Strachan on my team. And I'd like to take a moment at this time to say a very big thank you to the previous um, portfolio holder for regeneration, Tony Durkin. Um, he's made a magnificent contribution to this town. He's made a magnificent contribution to the Labour team. John, you've got some extremely big boots to fill there. Another new face in the cabinet is Lane Shears. She's been a councillor for two years. She's taking over the portfolio of governance from Waida. And the freshest face of all in our cabinet is a remarkably talented, industrious Eugenie Harvey, our new newest councillor, who will be bringing a wealth of experience from her professional life to the role of community and welfare. For those of you who are interested in statistics, this is a cabinet of experience. Seven out of eight of them are experienced councillors. Five out of eight of them are councillors who have held portfolios before. It's a cabinet with freshness. It has three new portfolio holders. It's a cabinet that is groundbreaking. It has the first ever BAME deputy leader in the history of Harmer. And it's for the first time ever that we have four out of the eight portfolio holders that are women appointed on merit, marking a 50-50 gender split, showing that this council doesn't just preach equality, but we practice it too. Thank you.